Tired? Stressed out? Overworked? I've had it! Enough already! It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. Your host, Bob Roth, executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, has learned that you can thrive without tension in this fast-paced world. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. Bob is on a roll. Yeah. This is Bob Roth, and this is Success Without Stress, and I am the executive director of the David Lynch Foundation. And I've been teaching Transcendental Meditation for over 40 years. And today, as my guest, um, we're very fortunate to have um, one of the leading proponents of Transcendental Meditation in the world today, the founder of the David Lynch Foundation, which was established almost nine years ago to bring the benefits of evidence-based meditation, Transcendental Meditation, to anyone in the world. And a little bit of background. Um, I started meditating as an 18-year-old college student, and I'm dating myself here back in 1969, and uh, became a teacher two or three years later, studied with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who was an Indian-trained physicist who became a great meditation teacher. And the trajectory for meditation in the world had been sort of horizontal, pretty much. I mean, there were fads, but about three or four years ago, five years ago, there was just an explosion of interest in meditation in general and specifically transcendental meditation, which is considered the gold standard of meditation techniques. And I think the reason for that is threefold. Number one, the problem of stress is getting worse and worse and worse. Everyone feels it. All of you listening, driving in a car at home know what stress is. The conventional, traditional approaches to reduce stress or prevent stress aren't working you know, across the board. For a lot of people, that means pills from pharmaceutical companies or self-medicating through alcohol and non-prescribed drugs. And the fact that there's so much research now on alternative approaches like meditation in general. And because we live in a scientific age, we know that they're, all meditations aren't alike. And one particular form of meditation, transcendental meditation, has an enormous amount of research to um, document and justify its effectiveness. The program today, actually, uh, Greg and Rory producing the show and I were talking about what we want to call this show, and we were thinking to call it Transforming Lives, but we thought it really didn't do justice to it, that really the purpose of meditation is not just to get rid of stress, it's really to unfold an individual's full, unbounded creative potential. And what better way to uh, elucidate and illuminate the benefits of meditation or transcendental meditation than to talk to some of the most creative, successful people in the world. And my guest, as I said, is David Lynch, who is a, an award-winning filmmaker, television director. He's a visual artist. He is a just musician, several albums, including Crazy Clown Time, and a very, very, very dear friend of mine. I don't know if David would agree to that, but <laughs> we've traveled a lot together. And um, so we're here to talk about success. We're here to talk about the impact of stress on success. We're here to answer your questions, some of the people here in the audience, in the fishbowl. And uh, I, I would like to start, David, with uh, for you to define to me what, what does success mean to you, and when did you first have a feeling, or did you ever have a feeling that you were successful? Well, that's... Um... I think uh, success is happiness. Success is bliss. And uh, so everybody has a different idea of what success means to them. But ultimately, when they find success, um, it brings some happiness. And uh, the thing about uh, transcendental meditation is what we know about the world is a world of change. We find happiness out in the world. But we know that the happiness that we got for something yesterday starts fading, and tomorrow we start looking for happiness somewhere else. The happiness you get from within stays with you, and that is very huge success, to have happiness stay with you. Why do you think people look for happiness outside, you know, and success outside? I think um, they say that we're all... Uh, multi-trillionaires but we we don't haven't been told that that we all have this treasury within and uh, as soon as we're told we have this treasury 
then we sit, we get a little bit excited, but we want to know how to get to the treasury. And uh, the thing about transcendental meditation, I always say, it's like being given a key that opens the door to that treasury within. And uh, once you experience that treasury, life starts getting better and better. And people are starting to get hip to the scene now, and they they realize that they're they hear that there is this treasury unbounded consciousness happiness creativity intelligence love energy and peace within every human being and they can access that the missing ingredient of life these days is transcending and with transcendental meditation you will transcend and you will experience that treasury and life will get better and better you'll enjoy the work so much more ideas will flow intuition will grow and this you know relationships will improve all all the things that we're looking for you know like they say change begins within access that deepest level of life and start to boogie (laughs) (laughs) for a person who's listening to this who is a business person or a mother with children, a single mom with children at home, or a college student or a high school student or a musician, and they hear that and they think, oh, how's it going to be relevant to me making it through the day with my kids? You know, they're driving me nuts. How, how does this translate? It's like food. How is this food relative to your life? When am I going to have time to eat this stuff? And um, when you start getting weak and you can't walk, you know, and you're really thirsty, you find time to get some food and some water. And uh, when you, when you, when the penny drops and you, you know, catch this thing that there really is something within all of us that we've lost, you know, uh, the chance to experience, to access, to get that treasure, when that clicks in, you say, of course I can find 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon to dive within and get that because it serves the life so much. And people, you know, they say, how can that be possible that it really jumps things? And, but it's, it's true. And they realize it more and more because more and more people are experiencing it and telling people about it. And like you say, there's so much research showing nothing but benefits from experiencing that treasury within. So the, these people, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a hard thing to believe. It was hard for me to believe in the beginning. I thought, where is this within and how do you get there? And it just seemed, where is this within? It's, is it in your body? Is it in your heart, your knees, your feet? Where is this within? And then you learn that transcendental meditation is a mental technique. And the way to, that you go is through the mind. You go deeper levels of mind, then deeper levels of intellect. And at the border of intellect, you transcend and experience that treasure unbounded consciousness, all those positive qualities of consciousness. And it's people, you know, they get more energy. They get, you know, life just seems, you know, it feel good in your body. You're, you're enjoying things more and ideas are flowing. Uh, it's, it's very easy to pop out of bed with more excitement and you don't feel so fatigued. You don't feel so stressed. The, the thing about uh, transcending and expanding that consciousness from that experience is negativity starts to lift away. All those things that kind of cramp us, uh, like stress, traumatic stress, anxieties, worries, tension, uh, sorrow and depression, hate, anger, fear, these things start to lift away. And it's a huge freedom when they lift. It's, you realize what a heavy weight we live under. And when they start lifting away, whoa, you feel so good. Not only do, are those lifting away, I say gold is flowing in from within and garbage is going out. <laughs> Just by accessing that deepest level and with transcendental meditation, 
you get a mantra, a very specific sound vibration thought, which turns the awareness within. Mentally, you start going deeper into mind. That little mantra is like a boat that just takes you deeper and deeper because they say each deeper level of mind, each deeper level of intellect has more happiness. It just pulls the little boat at the shore, unbounded ocean. Experience that is so sublime, so thrilling, and life gets better. What if a person is uh, Catholic or or doesn't believe what you're saying or, you know, thinks, uh, you know, Bob here, Curry, said, is it is TM possible without a belief in a higher power? Some of the words you're saying, I mean, I'm, I meditate, but, you know, someone could be hearing that and say, whoa, I mean, it's very appealing, obviously, but is there some context here? Am I buying into something? You're not buying into anything except all positive. This field within, a, they say, is an eternal field. Eternal means it, it's that field they say never had a beginning. It is, and it will be forever. It's eternal. And it doesn't belong to any one religion. It belongs to all religions. It doesn't belong to any one person. It belongs to all human beings. And if you're a human being, it will work. This technique will open the door to that easily and effortlessly. And it's such a blessing. A 10-year-old can learn this technique to dive within. A 110-year-old can learn this technique to dive within. And no matter what, things will get better. How has this, thank you, how has this meditation, you've been practicing TM since um, you started with a racer head? I started in 1973, July 1st, on a beautiful Saturday morning at around 1130. <laughs> uh, do you remember what you had for breakfast? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just checking your memory there. Um, and uh, The breakfast wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm giving it context, Dave. <laughs> so he had breakfast at Sev Cheerios. Um, and what was it that drew you? I mean, why? I know the answer to this question because we've talked about it, but for people here... What was it that drew you to want to learn to meditate? This uh, phrase, well, two things. I heard the word enlightenment, and I wondered if it was true that a human being could gain what they called enlightenment, supreme enlightenment. And I wondered what in the world enlightenment would be. And then I got very depressed. I figured maybe if I was in the Far East, uh, there might be some teacher or somebody that could, you know, uh, give me something to gain enlightenment. But here I am in, in L.A. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so and then I heard a phrase, true happiness is not out there. True happiness lies within. And that phrase had a ring of truth. So but it's a depressing phrase also because they don't tell you where the within is and they don't tell you how to get there. So then I th heard about meditation. And I thought maybe meditation is the way to go within. Then I found out there's many, many, many forms of meditation. So I started reading about things, looking into this, asking questions. So many different forms of meditation and none of them seemed right for me. And then I found transcendental meditation and I liked what I heard about it and I wanted it and I went and got it. And how did that, your first meditations then, uh, inform or influence not just, you know, the way you live your life, but also your ability to create, your ability to produce? I think there's, you know, zillions of super creative people who don't meditate. And then I think for artists, there's this thing that anger and a little bit of depression and angst make you a better artist. And you hear about meditation and you think you're going to get calm, <laughs> super boring, and uh, you're going to lose your edge. And I had that same fear. And I thought maybe meditation would make everybody the same. 
and then they'll ring a bell and we'll all be out marching somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I just uh, worried about those things. But then I thought, no. And then a lot, another thing is a lot of people say, well, I make up my own meditation. I don't need any kind of join any group. And it makes you puke to think about joining a group. <laughs> what I liked about transcendental meditation was you don't have to join anything. It's your technique. Once you learn it, it's your technique. You don't even have to tell anybody you learn. It's your technique for the rest of your life. And what happens is you become more you. And you get more ideas and the more energy to fulfill those, you know, translating those ideas. And it's fuel for the artist, fuel for the human being. And you don't get like everybody else. And you grow faster between films or between paintings. You, you, it speeds things up. And when you start expanding this consciousness and those all positive qualities, not only does life get better, but you start making the subconscious conscious. And you can catch ideas on a deeper and deeper level. The more and more consciousness you have, so it fuels the work. And I say, you know, meditators would have an edge over artists that didn't meditate. And they say anger, real selfish, bitter anger, is really mind control. That anger's controlling you. It doesn't serve anything. If you're super anger, angry, that just it occupies the mind. Very little room for ideas to flow in. If you're depressed, really super depressed, you can't even get out of bed. You don't feel like working. If you, I say, if you have diarrhea, you're vomiting, <laughs> and a splitting headache, you don't feel like working. <laughs> and this diving within, the headache goes, the diarrhea goes, <laughs> and the vomiting stops. And you say, wait a minute, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you, a question often comes up, do you meditate in order to get good ideas in the meditation? Is, is this a way to sort of get good, and have you ever had good ideas, people yeah. ask? Yeah, yeah, meditation? yeah. There's a story. John Lennon was in Rishikesh with Maharishi, and he said, Maharishi, I don't I start meditating. I dive in there, and I start getting ideas for songs. What should I do? And Maharishi said, gently come out write those ideas down <laughs> and dive back in. And that was the white um, album. Yeah. yeah. So you, sometimes you get down in there and you'll get an idea and you think, well, I'll remember this. This is a very good idea. But when they come bobbing up to the surface, you say, Oh man, I, 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 if you feel horrible, if you forget a good idea. So you can, if you really get a good one, come out, write it down and go back in. But mostly meditation is not about getting ideas in the meditation. It's to expand that container. And uh, when you come out, you, got, you feel very refreshed. You feel energetic. And you're kind of, you know, uh, the conduit of, for, for those, that f flow of ideas is more open. And you just can... Uh, start desiring ideas, and they seem to float in. It's very beautiful. We, you're a very prolific creative artist, filmmaking, television production, photography, painting, woodwork. Have you always, were you always as a kid growing up in the upper Midwest, always a, this creative? Did meditation facilitate that? I, I never had an original idea until I was about 20 and then I felt I got uh, my first kind of idea I thought was original and then I guess I, I seemed to be creative but I, I looking back I, it was um, on shaky ground I wasn't so self-assured I had a kind of a weakness and I had, um, I, was, I was like a machine that an expert could look at and say, that machine could break down on us. And I felt like when I started meditating, 
all these mechanics came and polished that machine and machined better parts and started putting it together to really cook. And that's the way I felt. Thank you. We're going to take a break. I guess we'll be right back. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. Bob Roth, executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, has helped people from all walks of life transform their lives. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. This is Bob Roth. I am the executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, and my guest today on Success Without Stress is the founder of the David Lynch Foundation, David Lynch. And we are talking about success and creativity and stress and transcendental meditation and life. I have another question for you, David, to follow up on where we were, what we were just discussing. People have said, and you've heard this often, oh, you're Mr. Bliss. You know, you're, you are talking about this eternal field of bliss and, and your films. And is there a dichotomy there? And I bring it up because it's a fair question. And because you have a great answer. Uh, this is a real good question. And they say, how come if you're so happy, you make films uh, that are so dark and troubling? The bottom line is the artist doesn't have to suffer to show suffering. Or as you say, you don't have to die to shoot a death scene. And um, <laughs> Even more relevant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very relative. Yeah. Rel- relevant. And um, so stories throughout time are not just flat lines. They go have many, many ups and downs, many, many, you know, torments, uh, beautiful feelings, love and hate. All the opposites swim in the stories. And uh, life and death situations, that's what makes a good story. So uh, you, you get these ideas. I get ideas. And once in a while, I get an idea I fall in love with. And I always say, once you're in love, you, you just are in love. Not only do you know what you want to do, you need to do to translate those, those ideas, but you're in love. And uh, so I say sometimes maybe people maybe fall in love with a girl uh, that they maybe wouldn't want to take home to their parents, but they're in love. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, (laughs) um, do you find that you finish a film, Mulholland Drive, do you find that you need a, that meditation speeds up the process, sped up the process for you to come up with another original idea? You wrote a book, Catching the Big Fish, and you talk about the big fish being at the, big ideas being at the depth of the lake or the ocean, and the, those are the big ideas, and the small fish swim at the surface and that transcendental meditation allows you access to those bigger fish. You catch big ideas. Is it now you're working on a film, now you're working on a painting, now you're doing photography? What's the process like for David Lynch? And I am here with David Lynch. Well, it's like um, um, there's ideas out there for everything. And when you get an idea that you fall in love with, uh, that's a thrilling experience. And lately, I've been getting ideas for painting and ideas for photography and ideas uh, working with my friend Dean on music. So I've not, I haven't really been fishing so much uh, for uh, ideas for cinema. Uh, but some ideas for cinema have, have swum in. But um, it's... It's the, you go where the ideas take you. Film. Is it, um, talk a little bit about today's film industry. Well, I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling, and I think everybody would agree, the film industry has changed a, a lot in the last uh, seven years, say. Uh, digital came in strong and strong and stronger. Uh, celluloid is, is just not being used anymore everything's gone digital and it seems that the studios are 
very interested in franchise films, giant giant films um, uh, that have a life film after film after film, almost like a series on television. The art house cinema has pretty much gone away, and cable has replaced the art house cinema. I like cinema. I like to build it for the big screen and great sound in a theater. And that experience uh, is a little bit in jeopardy. So uh, it's a, it's, it's, I think the cinema is in a, a transition, but everybody knows things go in waves. The art house cinema could come back. So uh, I don't know which way the wind will blow in the future, but for right now, it's a little bit strange to think about, for me, uh, just the way it is right now, um, there's a little sadness that the film may not find the big screen and the great sound. For a long time, you were saying that uh, film was dead. You I was said yeah. celluloid. Cellu- I didn't celluloid. Not, not not film cinema. All right. For a long time, David, you had said that celluloid. <laughs> 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 what I meant to say, what mm-hmm. you misunderstood, but I <laughs> um, was dead and digital. Now, are you? I, it, we talked a little while ago, and you were sort of falling back in love with celluloid yeah and I'm with david lynch i had seen i'd seen so much digital i got kind of used to it and then i saw uh some things on film from the past and i said wait a minute this is so beautiful what that emulsion catches the depth of it the roundness color and it just sort of thrilled my soul like the in music the analog people they they just love analog and they were they don't feel it in the digital like the people that love vinyl records they hear a warmth a, some kind of thing it drives them nuts that they don't hear in digital and uh so I guess the the thing is there's room in the world for all of it, but primarily everything has gone digital. Do you have favorite television shows you watch? I like Breaking Bad and Mad Men. And seen any good, uh, Greg Shapiro asked, seen any good films lately? No, I haven't been going to the cinema. I haven't seen anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> okay, then what, what would be, this is a frequent asked question, as if you were curating, what would be your top five films when you look back? Um, I always say the same thing. Then say it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't veer off on any. I like um, Federico Fellini, uh, his film Eight and a Half. I like Stanley Kubrick's film Lolita. But I like pretty much all of Fellini's films, all of Stanley Kubrick's films. I like the film Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, one of my all-time favorite films is Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard. Uh, and I like uh, the filmmaker Jacques Tati. And I think My Uncle is one of my favorite films of Jacques Tati's. Those are five films. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch gears again back to the stress. And, um, and I am with David Lynch, who is the great renowned filmmaker and uh, visual artist and musician. And he's also the founder and chairman of the David Lynch Foundation. And we're talking now about creativity and success and art and transcendental meditation and his life. And uh, when we're going to be looking a little bit more at the foundation, but I want to ask you: the stress we've been meditating now for over forty years, almost forty years. Forty years. Forty years. Stress still an impact in your life? Absolutely. <laughs> T- tell me how you ex- w- what causes stress in your Everything life? Everything in this world is relative, so uh, I still feel stress uh, from time to time. But I, I, I'm, I pretty sure that if I hadn't been meditating for 40 years, I don't know if I'd be alive today. Um, Stress makes a person feel bad and weak 
and troubled. And enough stress can make you sick, and even more stress can kill you. There's stress-related illness. And they say if we could get rid of this stress, you know, it would be so good for us. And uh, it's, it's um, really true that you really start feeling better, so much better, when you get this, you know, experience of transcending every day. It's so beautiful, and stress does lift away. It's just because we live, everything is relative, even a little bit of stress is uncomfortable. And then there's situations where things get more stressful, but it, it doesn't hit you like it would if you weren't transcending. It just doesn't. Are there other, uh, Dr. Young here asked a question, how meditation has improved your health, but are there other things you do to promote, to improve your health? Diet, for example? No, uh, no, I don't eat red meat. Most people who start meditating, they quit smoking. I start meditating, I start loving smoking more, <laughs> more and more. <laughs> and... I think most people stop drinking alcohol, but I love red wine. And um, the thing I loved about Transcendental Meditation is you don't have to give up anything uh, to practice it. If something drops off naturally, peachy keen. You don't have to force yourself to be good. More and more, you just naturally do things that are good for you. You get kind of in tune with Mother Nature Mother Nature lives down there in that treasury. And Mother Nature likes it when you experience that and supports more and more your activity. These things are really, really, you feel this kind of support of nature more and more. And um, I think, you know, that diving within is so good for your heart and uh, your well-being uh, they say it's it's money in the bank, and if you're a regular meditator, you if you if you're a guy you'll get more handsome, <laughs> and and if you're a girl you'll get more beautiful, <laughs> and it just you get a kind of a glow. I've seen you know women before they meditate and then after, it's like night and day. They can be very beautiful physically, but some deep beauty starts shining through. And it's very difficult not to fall in love with them. <laughs> I'm with David Lynch, <laughs> filmmaker, uh, comedian, and uh, <laughs> and uh, founder of the David Lynch Foundation. And I have a question. We're going to jump to your foundation now. And in a few minutes, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to take questions from the audience here. David Lynch Foundation provides scholarships for, quote-unquote, at-risk individuals to learn transcendental meditation, and that has been defined as inner city school, for example, inner city school kids or veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress or um, women who are survivors of domestic violence. And I know the foundation is involved in Africa and offering programs in Africa and Asia and the Middle East, all over the world, hopefully soon to be working even with the United Nations to develop these programs. Um, you've had experience going into a school where kids meditate. What was that like? What, what was that like? Um... I, um, well, first of all, in Iowa, I visited Maharishi School <clears throat> of the Age of Enlightenment grade school. And um, it's kind of, uh, you go into the school and you feel a thick bliss in the atmosphere. And then you see these little people uh, so happy and, and acting in a very natural way. It's it's kind of an eye opener, and you went to a play, didn't you? I went to. Then they invited me to a high school play. Tell the story. Okay, it was a uh, in Iowa, Fairfield, Iowa, and I was invited to a high school play at night, and I did not want to go. <laughs> it was raining and very cold. And I went to this beautiful little theater, packed, and I was sitting in the middle of the middle. 
there is no way out. <laughs> and out on the stage came 15 or 20 students. And they weren't actors. They were just students. And what I saw, I thought this could move to Broadway and be a huge success. These students acted so naturally, consciousness glowing on their faces, great super timing, unbelievable humor, music, the, the, the talks, everything seemed very, very, very perfect. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I thought every actor, every actress, got to get this technique to dive within. It will serve their work so much, so natural and on a deeper and deeper level. Beautiful, beautiful thing. What do you think is the... No, but then I want to continue. You have, been, have you been to some of the schools, these underserved schools? What was I, that like? Bobby, we went. To, we went. We went. I would, but you're answering the question. Okay. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> that was a leading question, and now I'd like you to answer it. We went to Visitation Valley High School in San Francisco, which was at the time one of the worst schools. Maybe they said the worst school in San Francisco. And it was run by uh, the principal was Jim Dierke. And I say Jim Dierke is a hero, absolute uh, he would look like a good old boy, the last person you think you would go for meditation. But these schools had tried everything. You're not going to help the students by painting the school bright colors, giving the students nice little books, giving them even more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. Bullshit. <laughs> it's serious. All <laughs> this torment stays inside the little children or the big children. Filled with torment, filled with stress. It's a joke. Surface cures will never get rid of it. You give him this technique, and Jim Jerky fought for this thing, uh, quiet time in his school, public school, quiet time. They can learn transcendental meditation, or they can sit and be quiet. You can't ever force someone to learn to meditate, but they give him the opportunity to learn, and many, many students, teachers, staff, and Jim Jerky himself learned to do transcendental meditation. In one year, that school got so happy, all the fighting stopped, grades went up, teachers started loving to teach again, no more teacher burnout. It took the torment out of the students <sighs> right away. It, was, it took a year it, to get it, the program working and all this, but one year later, a school you would want to go to going from one of the worst schools to one of the best. And it's incredible, the happiness in this school. Absolutely incredible. You want to change the schools, give the students transcendental meditation. They'll unfold their, full, they'll unfold their full potential, which is what education is supposed to do, and they'll get happy, healthy, great relationships. They'll be like a family in that school, it, it's beautiful. Everything else, a surface thing, is a joke, a pathetic joke. And it's time to get real and give the students and the people something that really does it from within. Change begins within. It's all there. They've said it throughout time. Here's a technique that opens the door to that easily, effortlessly. Imagine if it was hard work to meditate. You ask the students to do it. It's hard work, boring, hard work. They wouldn't do it. Transcendental meditation, it feels good. It's easy to do. It's it. Technique works. <laughs> Things get better. So we're going to take a break, but thank you very much, David Lynch. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. Bob Roth, executive director of the David Lynch Foundation, has helped people from all walks of life transform their lives. This is Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104. This is Bob Roth. I'm here with Success Without Stress. Excuse me, I'll do that again. This is Bob Roth with Success Without Stress. I'm the exec. Oh. <laughs> One more time. Okay. Take three. All right. Oh, so when are we clapping? <laughs> right, right now. Right. Ready? One, two, three. 
This is Bob Roth, Success Without Stress. I'm the executive director of the David Lynch Foundation and a teacher of Transcendental Meditation for the past 40 years, and my very special guest and very dear friend, David Lynch, famed iconic filmmaker, artist, photographer, painter, musician, and the founder and chairman of the David Lynch Foundation. Uh, David has been speaking, just finished speaking about experience, his experience at a school in San Francisco where actually it was 300 kids uh, practice TM as part of a voluntary program called Quiet Time. And I just wanted to update that, that there are now almost 4,000 kids in public schools in San Francisco where the children and the teachers and the administrators are beginning and ending each day with what they call Quiet Time, 10 or 15 minutes of deep meditation or they have the option of sitting quietly and doing sustained reading. And the research from the San Francisco Unified School District coming out of the, those meditating school kids completely transforming the schools, as David said, a dramatic increase in graduation rates, decrease, obviously, in dropouts, an increase in test sc- improvement in test scores. And what's going on in San Francisco has also been replicated and is being replicated by the wonderful work of Lynn Kaplan in schools in Los Angeles, also in New York City, Washington, D.C., all over the country, and I should say all over the world. The David Lynch Foundation has provided scholarships for almost a half a million, we say at-risk kids, but really all kids are at risk, but in underserved schools throughout the United States, all over Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, Asia. It's a tremendous transformation. And the results of the work in those schools has spawned interest, spurred interest, now working with veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. And we're in the David Lynch Foundation is teaching on 10 military bases, veteran service organizations. The Department of Defense just gave a $2.4 million grant to study the effects of this meditation on post-traumatic stress disorder. We are going to now take questions from our wonderful audience here in the fishbowl at Sirius XM in New York City. Michael Shapiro. I have a question about creative process and the senses and the intellect. I'm a so-called classical composer. I compose orchestral music, chamber music, so forth. And I find that when I think too much about the next note, it always comes out wrong, and the result's bad, uniformly. But when I hear or think about the sound, then the results usually work. Any thoughts about the senses and intellect and For sure. Work? Um, it's this thing uh, that we're... We're all looking for it. Um, it's it's to get this thing to, that feels correct to us. And I say intuition is the number one tool of the artist. And intuition, I've heard, is emotion and intellect swimming together. And it makes a kind of a knowing, a knowing. And this knowingness is what uh, what what does it it's uh, it's uh, something that grows the more you transcend it could be seen as an ocean of all knowingness and this comes up more and more and more this intuition where you kind of just know when something isn't correct and know a way to make it correct and even more a kind of a flow starts. So you start going on the piano and without intellect thinking or without just pure emotion, but with this intuition, it just, it's like it was in a way, it's just like talking to you and, but it's, you're not in the way of it. It's a flow and you surprise yourself. And I'm sure you've had this experience. It's like getting in the zone, they say, or getting in the groove or whatever, but something happens when you click in. And this clicking in, this knowing, is a thing that exists within, and you can bring it out by experiencing it. Next question. Hi, David. Thanks so much for letting us join you today. Uh, My name is Mark Strouch. I heard recently that you um, loaned your name to a a new film program. 
um, at Maharishi University of Management in, in Fairfield, Iowa. And I was wondering what your thoughts were as to why you, you loaned your name. It's, it's your brand. They asked me to give my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, so but you said yes. I said yes. Yeah, so, I mean, so what do you think is, is the nature of transformative media? Why, why and, and the role of media and film in society? You know, creativity, like I said, can go in all, all fields. And uh, this is the master's program at Maharishi University of Management. And the only difference, really, in what they're doing there is having the filmmakers learn transcendental meditation. And when they learn transcendental meditation, they're like uh, getting um, a box of tools that other schools you know don't don't give the students it's really important and what i hope happens is what should happen is that each one of those students is going to find for themselves that thrill of catching ideas on a deeper and deeper level they'll see their own work you know balloon out and 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 they'll get into that world of cinema deeper and deeper and um go into new worlds um, easier and easier with more thrill, more happiness, and this creativity will flow. I just uh, think it's a, it's a great program. It sounds it's like any film school, though, could say, okay, let's give the students uh, this transcendental meditation. Uh, it would be the same thing. And... Uh, it's money in the bank for the filmmakers. It's so beautiful for all the people, no matter what walk of uh, you know life. But um, that's why I wanted to do it. We'll go a, a few quick questions. Thank you, Bobby, and thank you, Dave, for being here today. I just wanted to ask you, you know, in the schools, you know, they have someone telling them to sit down and meditate twice a day, but in your normal life, you know, you're busy, you get up in the morning, you're rushing. How do you find 20 minutes in the morning? And where's the weirdest place you've ever meditated in your life? Because um, I know you probably have found some funny places. You can meditate anywhere. This field within is unbounded. It exists everywhere at the base of all matter and all mind. And noise is no barrier to it. It's very easy to arrange the schedule to find the 20 minutes, carve out those 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon and meditate. It's, it's just I've been meditating 40 years I've never missed a meditation morning and evening in those 40 years. And I've been very busy. So um, <laughs> it's, it's not a difficult thing. One more question. Hi, David. Bud Liebler. Good to see you, Bud. Good to see you, too. I want to ask you a question. You wrote a book, Catching the Big Fish. What's the biggest fish you ever caught as a result of your meditation? Well, I haven't caught it yet, but the biggest fish would be enlightenment. That's the fish we really want to catch and enlightenment means the end to all problems the end of suffering absolutely fulfillment uh, total fulfillment total liberation and this is a possibility for every single human being they say it's our birthright to one day enjoy supreme enlightenment it just needs to be unfolded. And how do you unfold it? You get a ticket to that treasury within, experience it every day, transcend it is what it is. Transcend, transcend, the missing ingredient in life. Transcend every day. You're going to unfold your full potential. And you're going to really enjoy the ride. This is Bob Roth with Success Without Stress with Sirius XM Indy 104. You're listening to Success Without Stress with Bob Roth on Sirius XM Indy 104.